So in this video, I want to talk about Alia sometimes hides her feelings in Russian and talk about the anime itself and what drew me into the anime and why I think if you are into comedy romance school settings, then I definitely think this is a series for you. And of course, from the title of the anime, it's very self-explanatory. Alia, who is the main female character in the sort of white hair, blue eyes, sometimes hides her feelings in Russian. It's very much of a synapsis within the title. And I do like that, actually, with some animes where they do kind of have like a bit of a synapsis in the title. Though, of course, there's always the running joke of the titles that end up being like two lines long or almost like a paragraph of explaining what the story is about. That can be a little bit excessive, but I feel like when you keep it short and sweet like that, it kind of does highlight what the story is about. But at the same time, when you've got other shows that are kind of a little bit more simpler, yeah. But what really drew me to this was when watching the first couple of episodes, I really fell in love with the actual story itself between Alia, the main male protagonist, his sister, her sister, and just some of the interesting things that are kind of intertwined together. And that's what drew me into wanting to read the light novel. So of course, if you do want more content on Alia sometimes hides her feelings in Russian, and you're really digging the series and you want more deep dives into it, I am reviewing and doing analysis on each of the volumes as I go through it. So of course, give that a check out as well. So I will leave that in the pinned comment and the description of the video. What drew me into it is one of the things that I've always loved about some romance series is when you have characters that are multi-layered. They aren't just one-dimensional. But one of the other issues that's been brought up with the anime is the tropey aspect of it. And I wanted to talk about that because one of the first things that, of course, people have worked out within the first couple of episodes is Alia's older sister is clearly the childhood friend. Like, everyone's twigged to that. And that's the thing. I've not even read deep enough into the light novels, if it actually is explained, because that's the thing. I don't know. I don't even know if it's actually, this is true, but I'm just adamant on that. And everyone else agrees with her, that, that I know that I've talked to, agrees that Alia's older sister is the childhood friend. So we've all kind of twigged to that. And the anime kind of really sh highlights that, in my opinion. But then it brings up the discussion of, oh, childhood friend is going to lose. But to me, I don't think that's the case of what the story is trying to portray. Because I've seen a lot of people say, oh, this sucks because it's a trope and it's overused. And I'm like, yeah, the reason why tropes exist is because, yeah, stories do use similar aspects. I mean, we've had so many series out there. When you look at the amount of light novels and mangas and shows and movies and TV series all out there, yeah, you're going to have some crossover it is impossible at this point for shows to be truly unique because everything has been done to some degree like to death like romance animes yeah there's millions of them out there and when you look at the anime industry when it comes to light novels and mangas there are so many romance stories out there so you've got plenty of variety of out there to find what you find interesting and then kind of dig deeper into it so i don't have an issue with tropes because i also understand that there is so much out there that it's impossible to find something that hasn't done something already before. And I know some people say, oh, but every single series has a childhood friend. Sure, to some degree, but this is the thing. When you try to make romances that have some drama aspect to it, you're going to have to throw in things like childhood friends, sister complexes, family rivalries, uh, other friends that have you just made that, that that actually don't agree with the relationship and stuff like that. Like, there's always going to be different things that they're going to use to create conflict when it comes to a story. Otherwise, there wouldn't be anything there. So, but the thing about Alia sometimes hides her feelings in Russian that I think does the, the childhood friend trope good is that I don't think she is part of the race. And he uses this as kind of like an analogy of like, okay, when it comes to the romance aspect of it, who is in the race to win? Well, we know already that the end game and the end result is going to be Alia and him. They are going to be a couple. They are going to be an item. Anyone that thinks any other character has a chance to win is delusional. They're delulu, as another content creator likes to use that I watch, as for the memes. But they're delulu. They, they're just being delusional if they think any other character is going to win. Now, the difference between this series and other series, say like a Nisika, 
is that, or even Darmachi I use in my light novel review as an example, is that they try to perceive to give you this impression that the other characters have a chance. And actually Darmachi doesn't even let you think that. But like Nasika, Nasika will try to give you this delusional idea of, oh, these other girls might have a chance. And it's like, no, they don't. Like Rent a Girlfriend was another example of that, that kept trying to push that idea. And so for me, when I look at this, I'm like, okay, but these girls aren't even really trying to compete in the race. Now, if you look at the sister, she's just been a troll and I love her for that. She is a masterclass troll. But Alia's older sister, I don't think is even trying to actually win his affection over. I think she's just like, hey, I remember you in the past. You don't remember me right now. And she's happy that her sister, her younger sister, has found love and she's going to push them together. She is not competing. Yes, she's a childhood friend, but there's a difference between being a childhood friend and a childhood friend that is trying to compete for his romantic feelings. I don't think she's trying to do that. I think she's going to push them together, and that's what I think the end result is. So she's not even part of the race. And that's what I think is different about this. So I don't agree with this mindset of this show sucks and it's trying to use tropes, and I'm like, no. Because, yes, there's a childhood friend in it, but it's not in the same way. She's not trying to compete. Maybe I'm wrong, and maybe later on in the story she does try to compete, but I just don't see that in her. Because you can see within the first four episodes, or sorry, three episodes, is that she is trying to support her sister. And that's how I see it. And that's why this story has kind of made me really become more interested in it, because they are trying to do some things differently. At the end of the day, yes, you're going to have tropes. But tropes inherently are not a bad thing. I just feel like a lot of content creators try and use tropes as a way to kind of like throw shade at it, being like, oh, but these are these tropes and they're all wet. And I'm like, yeah, of course it's going to be tropes, because that's how a trope is created, because certain things get done a lot. And when you've got so many shows out there, yes, some things are going to be similar. It's impossible. As I stated, there's so much variety out there that when you've read enough and consumed enough media, things are going to start feeling somewhat similar. And there's a whole different discussion to be made about the idea of perfection and good and all those kinds of things that I could get into. But for me personally, what I like about the series is that you know what the end goal is. You know that these two are going to get together at the end of the story. It's about the journey that I find most interesting about it. And the other thing though too is as much as yes, there is a sister, blood sister, it's not a stepsister, it's a blood sister, but they're trying to hide that they're actually blood related, which adds a bit of a conflict in there, but there's some family drama as well. And I like the way the sister is kind of being a bit of a masterclass troll. And she's kind of trying to push Alia to actually be a little bit more forthcoming with her feelings. Because, yeah, his sister is like, actually confesses her love in a sense. And again, I'll give a bit of context here. But she confesses her love to Alia and saying, yeah, I love my brother. You know, who cares? But to me, it's very clear that she loves her brother from a brotherly side of things, but she deliberately leads out the context as to troll Alia. That's what I love about it. That's what I think the series does perfectly, is the way they portray the tropes and then spin them up a little bit. So for me personally, I think this is a great series. I highly recommend this to anyone that wants a comedy romance school setting and is, you know, loves that kind of like, I like to say it. it's like isekai it's like junk food if you consume enough of these types of things they all feel like junk food you just you just love it you just devour it so for me comedy romance school settings like this feel like isekais to me there's heaps of them out there there's lots of variety you can just pick and choose the ones that you find that most resonate with you and this one is one that i really do love because it tries to do something different with many different tropes but i do not see tropes as a negative aspect while other content creators may see them as a negative aspect. Because the reality is, is yeah, they get done a lot, but I like to see how they've been done in a different way. And so, again, I love what the story is trying to do. And it's always heartwarming and so adorable to see Alia actually, as the story says, confesses her feelings and kind of says these things that she's deep down feeling inside, and then him understanding them, but her not knowing that he does understand them. And it's just kind of like... Either she's doing it because she kind of really hopes that he would 
know these feelings or she's just a daredevil like she just the exoticness of like it's like running down the street naked or kind of thing like she just likes doing something really silly and outlandish and it's just like playing with fire I don't know there's just something so funny about her and she's quite erotic honestly she really has a bit of a naughty side to her and especially with the socks thing like she wants him to put on the socks and that's the thing, there's a bit more of a fun side to her, which I do think could be off-putting for some people, because some anime fans go into these shows and don't like any idea of eroticness, and eroticness doesn't have to be showing cleavage. Eroticness can be a little bit of playfulness, the way they word things, other bodily parts, like feet, hips, legs, you know, a little bit of your shoulders, like you know, flirting with each other with the eyes. I'm not saying that happens in these shows, but I'm just giving context to other ways of flirting and being erotic. It doesn't just have to be, oh, look, I flashed my gazongas, my Mount Everest's, my Twin Towers. Like, you don't just have to do that to make it fan service You can do other things to make it quite flirtatious and fun. And I do feel like she has a bit of a flirtatious, fun, erotic side to her, which is nice and refreshing because she is a little bit more naughty in that sense as had some people would see it rather than it just being the main male protagonist that only has the dirty thoughts the girl also has that because i think the problem is with some animes is that they try and make these female characters too pure and it's like okay let's be real here there are a lot of chicks out there that are thirsty so why are we pretending like every female character out there is some pure innocent maiden when in reality a lot of chicks out there definitely have more dirtier thoughts than even males. I have female friends that have more vivid and wild imagination when it comes to things than even I do. And that's the thing. I've had fun, crazy conversations with my female friends over some stuff. I remember once I was trying to send a image to my male friend and I accidentally sent it to one of my female friends and it was just funny and I was just sitting there sweating bullets I was like oh god and I mean it was a pretty good image can't remember what it was but it was yeah it was really spicy and she replied and I'm like oh god and she just said send more so that's the thing you got to realize that yeah there are people like that so that's the thing again I love the sister because the sister to the main male protagonist because she is just an absolute troll, absolute fun, and she kind of really role plays into that anime kind of style. Like, like she's an anime fan, she's a weeb, all that kind of stuff, and so she really role plays into it. And then Alia, her more fun, exotic kind of personality that she kind of hides behind her Russian. Then you've also got the older sister who I think is going to be a major supporting role as well and then there are other characters that you will meet as well and the male male protagonist having a more hidden past there's clearly something about him that motivates him that drives him but also some of the character defects as well in him that he's got some insecurities that's another thing there is a lot of complexity to these characters to talk about the goods and the bads when it comes to what makes them tick what makes them do what they do and what drives them so that's why i really love the series so again if you want more alia sometimes hides her feelings in russian content check out my light novel reviews i will be continuing to review them how often i will be reviewing them i don't know it just depends on what time i have available to read them but if you do want to support my light novel content because it does take much longer to do those videos because again i've got to read a light novel and that can take a bit of time when i'm reading things because i'm not the fastest reader out there i don't zip through a book in like an hour or a couple of hours it takes me days to get through if you do want to support that content then consider liking consider subscribing or if you want patreon discord access then i do have a patreon consider supporting them that way if you do want to help but you don't have to it's just there as an option if you do want to so again i'd love to know your thoughts in the comment section down below are you watching this anime are you reading the light novels yes there is a manga but the light novels are the main source material and again if you like this video hit the like subscribe and i'll see you beautiful nerds in the next video